a job. Okay. <gasps> oh, what's that? What's that, baby? Oh, okay. All in my coffee cup. Thank you. You liking the ice cube? <sighs> okay, hi. So you clicked on a romance vlog. This week is gonna be a romance vlog. I don't know. I just I'm just really feeling it. I'm like making February my like very lovey dovey month in terms of like just doing things for myself. I want to read. I'm in the mood for romance and like fantasy romance and fantasy in general. So. Um, I currently have two books on the go. I'm not sure if one of them is actually a romance or not. I do need to check on that, so let me check on that first because the first one is an audiobook. Today's Monday. Can you believe I'm starting a vlog on Monday? Because I can't. I like never, <laughs> can never seem to start vlogging on a Monday. Um, okay, so it's not tagged under romance, but it feels like there's a romance in this one. Okay, there is romance. Okay, we're gonna count it because it is Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. I'm having a good old time with this. I've really missed young adult fantasy. Like I've missed it so much. It's just really something that I derive a lot of like strength and inspiration from. I just want to imagine when I'm like cleaning my apartment or just like laying in bed, like falling asleep that I live in this cute quaint little fantasy village and that I, you know, I'm, I'm the apothecary's daughter or something and I make little potions always been my dream but dreams lie beneath it says it's a must read for fans of the hazelwood and the night circus i haven't i think i actually dnf the hazelwood that's i don't know if that's true or not um but i did enjoy the night circus so um i'm a little foggy on the magic system right now but we are following our girl i really like her so far and she is the daughter of like the um i guess nightmare reader of the town because there is a curse that uh, kind of originated in the mountains overlooking their village and their area um, and every new moon magic flows from the nearby mountain and brings nightmares to life because normally there are no nightmares um, and only magicians who serve as territory wardens stand between people and their worst dreams so her father is like the warden of the town he's the magician they are known as magicians and so when someone has a nightmare, they go to their house, they like experience their dream, they have the power to enter into that person's dream, experience it all, and then ward it off because otherwise I think these nightmares have the power to manifest into real life and uh, have some bad consequences. So our girl's name is Clementine and she's kind of ready to take over as warden when the book opens her father is in bed with fever. Never goes well for people with fevers in medieval towns. She's like, okay, I'm gonna go read this person's nightmare all by myself since my father is sick. And when she is on her way back home, she runs into two magicians. Um, there's not really supposed to be any other magicians in the area. Um, and they are there to challenge her for the position of warden of the town. She seeks revenge, but as she gets closer to one of the handsome young magicians, secrets as well as romance begins to rise. I'm just at the part now where we meet the two new magicians. I'm only 9% through. Um, it's a little bit of a longer audiobook, but I'm really liking it. And then the book that I'm physically reading is from Luca with Love by Mariana Zapata. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna see this. I do want to like get all the way through this one because I bought this myself for myself last year. I feel like I feel like my exposure is a little exposed and I primarily bought this because it was kind of giving me winter vibes obviously and it is a romance about figure skating. It's a sports romance about figure skating and I was just totally like I am prepared to picture our two main leads as Tessa and Scott aka mom and dad. So that's kind of where we're at. So far I'm not liking Mariana Zapata's writing style. Um, our main girl Jasmine is 26 years old but I was like so shocked to learn that because her narrative voice reads like like how I thought and spoke when I was 14. It kind of reads like someone who's just discovered swearing. So far there's been like four to five F-bombs per page, which like I don't care about. It, it's just honestly really boring, kind of jarring, and like you could literally just write something better <laughs> than just saying the F word every three seconds. But she's having a really bad time because she's 26. She's like never won any figure skating championships or big competitions, even though it's been like her lifelong dream. And everyone is just kind of like, 
you know, you're 26, you're kind of, you're kind of done, you're old news, you're not going to get a new partner because she wants to skate in pairs, and also her arch nemesis, this guy that she hates, is named um, Ivan Lukov, and his family, like, owns the um, arena that she practices in, but then, um, 36 pages into the book, I'm only 36 pages in, his coach, like Lukov's coach, comes over to her and she's like, hey, can you be Ivan's partner? And she's like, me? No, I hate that guy. Um, but I mean, obviously she's gonna say yes. So far, it's just really been Jasmine hating on all of the other girl figure skaters. Every time she hears one of them talk, she's like, had I ever been that annoying, that girly? <sighs> Jasmine, please. I do get the really like cutthroat and competitive nature that like you're not really put in an environment to make strong friendships or like each other that much when like everything is so competitive because I mean like that's how it was at the dance studio when I did ballet and a few other kinds of dance. Was it a great environment among the young girls who were competitive? No. Did they say some nasty things? Yes. So we have from Lukov with love, uh, dreams, lie beneath and then i'll see what else i want to pick up for this romance reading vlog because this was just kind of spur of the moment so Hello, it's the next day. We have a crumb of sun. I've read a little bit more of From Luca With Love. I'm like 72 pages into it. I'm not, like I just can't get behind Jasmine, our main girl. I feel like Mariana Zapata is trying really, really hard to make Jasmine just seem so kind of person who has a problem with everyone. And like I was saying, the part I was at is where she just got sat down by Ivan's coach and Ivan to be like, can you work with us? Can you be his partner? And then she just kept being like, no, no, no. And then obviously by the end of the chapter, she's like, yeah, of course I'll be your partner. And then she goes home and has a meeting with her family who are trying to like get some information out of her on her day. She just keeps bringing up how like her and Ivan have such a rivalry, how much of a bad person he is and her family is literally like no like he's just teasing you you guys are just like bickering and bantering and you think he's satan like the amount of times jasmine has called ivan like satan or lucifer a lot of the insults too are just so like middle school like they're 26 years old he's 30 ivan is 30 ivan is 30 and she's 26 and i'm just like what why are you guys speaking like this the excessive swearing hasn't stopped and it's like kind of really grating on my nerves because it's just every single page. I just want to get out of Jasmine's head. So yeah, I am 70-ish pages through. I'm gonna read a little bit more of this right now. As it goes, I'm enjoying so much more Dreams Lie Beneath. I was listening a lot to that this morning. This one's moving at a nice pace because 
Clementine and her father, their position is being threatened by the two brothers named, the two magician brothers who just came into town, named, oh god, Phelan. Phelan and Lennox? Is it Lennox, I think? And they're trying to take like the territory away from her father, so lots of things are happening there. I am actually liking the dream nightmare thing because it's like the nightmares are manifested in reality instead of like you're going into like a dreamscape the dreams are brought into reality and i kind of like that so i'm probably going to sit down now and read a little bit more of this i just filmed a video and i'm taking a break from editing <sighs> because it's a long one i don't know how to stop talking okay so hello oh very bright i'm not complaining um i got 140 pages through from a luca would love so the fact that luca's nickname for her is calling her meatball like he just calls her meatball that's her nickname they just started to train together and um i'm just really it's really repetitive honestly the banter it's not even banter it's just them calling each other really juvenile insults like it's not even funny she's very jaded because obviously she is kind of nearing the end of her time in figure skating in terms of competing because she hasn't been able to find a partner and so she's just extremely bitter like understandably so but just the way that she talks and like everything that she says it's bitter in a very very juvenile way i'm finding it really hard to believe that 26 and 30 year olds are talking this way and like acting this way in a professional setting so yeah anyway i'm gonna keep reading it because i'm like flying through it uh, but i just really hope it turns around soon and i start to love it my first sip of the day i just woke up uh, i just washed my face but yes i'm still wearing the same romper that i was in yesterday because it's just so comfortable that i slept in it i got this from victoria's secret i think on their boxing day sale um but yeah very cozy anyway i am trying to get back to the habit of reading in bed with my coffee when i wake up i'm just having a little bit of time with my coffee and my book so i thought i would try getting back into that habit this morning, um, I really slept in with Kelsifer. He has this thing where like, he can kind of tell when I'm really tired because I don't sleep in with him every morning, but like he knows, like he'll get back into bed with me because I always get up to say goodbye to my partner. And then so he just knows, like he's in bed waiting for me. He's like, Emma, you need some more sleep, like get back in here. <laughs> so we had a little little nap together, but I'm actually a lot further in from Lukov, Lukov with love um, because I'm 282 pages through. Um, you know how yesterday I was kind of asking for a miracle to happen and that I would somehow start enjoying the book a lot more? Prayers were answered. Um, I am. I really am enjoying the book a lot, a lot more. I think it's because, like, Jasmine is actually going through some character growth. Shocker. <laughs> like, I feel like I haven't really seen in a lot of contemporary romances recently, honestly. It's mostly always either, like, no one goes through character growth or it's just the male love interest who has to change something about his life, but it's hardly ever, like, our female love interest being like, you know what? I kind of suck. Let's do something about it. So I'm actually really appreciating that now um, because she's just kind of realizing that she's pushed everything and everyone away from her and become very obsessive over figure skating. But I am actually liking like them kind of as, they're just friends right now. They've decided to just be friends even though they hate each other, even though it's obvious that like he's never hated her. They've just been joking, but like she's taken it way too seriously because she's kind of got a stick up her butt and like, anyway. But it's very obvious to like the reader that Ivan has probably like been obsessed with Jasmine for years. Drama happening, we have them getting a lot closer and like it is a book now that I'm finding I actually do want to pick up. So I thought it would be perfect to read with my coffee this morning. And I'm just really happy about that as well because I've been in a little bit of a reading slump. I think just mental health. Okay, Kelsifer. I think just because of mental health, a mental health reading slump, I'm excited to uh, try and stay on top of things today and hopefully start it off with just like a few chapters, just a few chapters reading. I'm over halfway through now, so, and like it, it is a 530 page, no, yeah, 530 page book, but it's really not feeling like that. I would say the beginning is really slow to get into and that's when it feels like, oh my gosh, why is this a 500 page book? But now I'm like flying through it, like flying, flying through it. Um, so. 
we'll see. I hope I can actually really, really start liking it. Um, but I am interested now to see where it goes. So I think I need to go stop Kelsifer from being a criminal for a second. So, one second. Have you ever seen a more beautiful thing? Look, look at this ham sandwich. This it is vegan ham sandwich, but you know, it's beautiful. What a beautiful thing of beauty. This is like my go-to lunch, honestly. Um, really, really, really love it. So I'm gonna eat this. I'm currently watching BookTube. I'm watching um, Katie Coulson's new video, which is so impressive because there she is. Um, she like did how many hours of editing? I think she said 27 to go through like so many different booktubers favorite books of 2022 and then she ranked them all so super interesting um i'm gonna finish watching this eat my lunch and then i did just get dressed kelsifer is here we were just having crackhead hours but he's all tuckered out from that now apparently um and then i'm probably gonna film a video Okay, hi, it's me. Another another update on Lukov. Um, I am I only have 150 pages left. I'm kind of sad. I'm really liking the slow burn. I guess it's true. No one does slow burn like Mariana Zapata. And this one is like I just the sound that this book makes weird. Um, but yeah, I'm on chapter 15. Things are changing in the relationship. Uh, the character development has been nice to see. I think it's just been a while since I've read a romance. With actual character development however i am kind of concerned because there's only 150 pages left and like we still haven't got to any figure skating competitions like they haven't actually competed so i'm just kind of like how is she gonna wrap this up in not a lot of time but 
Um, I kind of wanted to finish this today. I don't know if I am because I'm so tired. I got around like four hours of sleep last night, which was not great. I really, really want to finish this because I am liking it a lot more now. I'm not like loving, loving it, but like it's just making me feel mushy gushy inside. The big complaint that I would have about this right now is the writing. I think it's just too much in the head of Jasmine and I just really don't want to know every single thing that she's thinking because it gets really repetitive because she just refuses to believe that Ivan would ever be nice to her for any reason. Um, so that's kind of, it's, it's a bit old for me, but um, other than that, I am kind of liking it. And then I'm still listening to Dreams Lie Beneath. This one's really fun because it's just getting me back into my cozy fantasy vibes that I haven't had for a while. That's one of the reasons I love reading fantasy so much is just for those small town, mountain, wilderness, animals, forests, making little potions vibes. It's just so my thing. And Dreams Lie Beneath just has a lot of Clementine running around um, and sh I just really feel her feel for her right now because she's in a big city she's been kind of dislocated from her home and she's so out of sorts um, so I'm just really really relating to her but yeah we're having some cool magic stuff and I'm just liking it so far I'm really still not very far through so those are how the two first reads of February are going I also started going to therapy this week did I? Yeah, this week I booked a couple neurofeedback sessions, which is something I'm relatively new to. This this was the first time I ever did it, but it was recommended to me by a past therapist. Um, I'm going to describe it completely wrong, so I won't really try, but essentially you get hooked up, like your brain hooked up. Um, so they measure your brain waves, and then it's just like a positive feedback loop that they feed you with... Um, the brain waves that you're getting so you just sit there relaxed and you listen to music and then the music will cut out um and it conditions your brain to keep the different electrical waves like that your brain's operating on from like zero hertz to i don't know how far up it goes um back into their optimal limit essentially so your brain can function and it helps treat you know anxiety depression pretty much any issue i think you're having but um today was my second session so i really liked it I, i've been feeling really good after them and yeah i'm gonna stick with neurofeedback for a little bit and then i did book my first like psychotherapy session for next week as well at the same place um with a therapist so i'm gonna try and combining neurofeedback and traditional psychotherapy as well i just really really i think i've had a piece of fluff in my hair this whole time really want to prioritize myself this month so i might read a little bit of this in bed and then just conk out because i can feel myself getting so tired <laughs> 